My name is Jong Hyuk Song. Uh, I'm in love third also of this t o Actually, first and second also are playing CTF now, including me. So if you want to see first and second also or me, you can see there. But anyway, the today title, today talk's title is Automotive USB Forging. How to forging USB in vehicles to discover the real world vulnerabilities. In this talk, we propose a, a way to conduct USB forging to a real car. <clears throat> we tried USB forging to real cars and found some vulnerabilities. Today, I'm going to show how we did it. First, I'm going to introduce my team. Uh, actually, we are all Red Team members and we are all offensive security researchers at Autocrypt. Autocrypt is a mobility security company, especially focusing on automotive security. So we have been conducting pen penetration tests and forging tests with OEMs and TR companies. Uh, we are actually doing security tests to the real cars with car companies. So Of course, among the tests, we are doing USB forging. So I'm going to tell you <coughs> how we are doing USB forging in the field. And also, I will explain the limitations of the current method. And I will describe how we have improved it. So let's talk about the current USB forging in automotive industry. Uh, there are sold three characteristics in USB forging to real cars. First, it's black box forging. OEM usually don't have a source code of the car because tier suppliers don't provide source code to the OEMs. So we also, we also don't have source code and so we cannot rebuild the source code for forging. And most cases, Our target is completed vehicles <coughs> with the production version of issues. It means that there is no, no debugger ports, so we cannot monitor inside of, uh, inside of car. Because of these reasons, most security tests to the cars are usually done in the black box. So we have to find a way to test w e l l even in the black box testing. Second, Uh, there is no commercial USB forger that can be directly connected to the car with a USB cable. There are some research about USB forging, you know, but there are not, not, not useful forgers for car forging. In particular, there is no USB forger that can be used in a black box environment. We are able to test USB on the completed car Uh, to do that, we need to connect a test PC to the car by USB. But there is no commercial USB forger which can uh, connect to the car directly. Because of the first and second region, there is a third region, third characteristic, to test the uh, attack over USB, uh, Automotive OEM began to test the video players in the infotainment system by inserting USB stick contain, containing malformed video files. <clears throat> I, don't know, I don't know how all automakers do USB forging, but as far as I know, many USB forging tests are usually done in this way for the completed car. So, uh, This slide shows the current USB forging methods, uh, forging procedures that are performed in the field. First, <coughs> uh, font is so sm small, sorry. <laughs> First, uh, tester generates malformed media files by p o r g e r in the PC. Second, tester copies the malformed files to the USB stick. And third, tester inserts the USB stick into the car This USB stick actually uh, inserted into the USB port of the head unit issue, infotainment issue. Fourth, most media players in the car automatically lose the file in the USB stick and play the files. 
fifth, when the media when media player plays the files, the media player could be freezed or issue could be rebooted. So tester should keep an eye on the media player while forging to to check the failures. If and if all files are played, tester go back to step one and repeat all this step again. Uh, most 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 case head unit issue, head head unit, okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in in this in this procedure, we usually play the hundreds or thousands of files at a time. Uh, uh, it depends on the maximum number of files that video player can load at one time. Of course, the files are ab abnormal files, <coughs> malformed files. The media player does not play most the files and just move on to the next file. So usually, uh, usually it takes about 10 minutes or five minutes to play a few hundred files. It means that tester has to repeat this process every 10 minutes. This is quite burden and annoying task to the testers. And there's one more important things. Uh, we are testing the completed car. It means that tester should do this in the car, sitting on car seat. It could be also very uncomfortable to the tester. Okay, so let me summarize the limitation again. First, each step requires many manual efforts, efforts to testers. There are many steps in the test procedure. Tester should generate files, copy files, and insert stick and insert sticks. And in every test cycle, tester should repeat that that action again and again. It's very burden to testers. Second, there's a limit number of files that can be tested at a time. This is uh this is the main reason that tester should repeat this uh the step several times. <coughs> Each media player in the car has the maximum number of files that can be played at one time. Uh, even if you can put millions of files into a USB stick, the media player only takes the hundreds or thousands of files and plays only them. So when all files on the USB sticks are played, the tester must generate new files again and put them into USB stick again and insert it into the car again. So, uh, as you know, it's a forging test, so we need to test as many files as possible to find vulnerabilities. So test should repeat those actions several times to test enough file. <coughs> and third, to detect failures by forging, test bu tester must keep an eye on the car uh, while it's being paused. So tester used in this test, tester used, uh, tester used a media file forger. Uh, it's not connected to the car. It just generates from the files in the PC. So tester, uh, so forger uh, cannot detect the failures caused by forging. Therefore, tester should observe the media player while, uh, it's, while forging is performed. As you know, as I said before, to find the vulnerability, tester should test a large number of files. It means that he stay and watch the media player for a long time in the car. It's not that good. Fourth, uh, it's application, application forging. Uh, this method cannot do kernel forging. So it's obvious because it's media player forging. But uh, testing only media player is not enough to check all USB attacks. So in this talk, I, we suggest a new automotive USB forging method, which is a practical and effective. We try to remove the current limitations that I mentioned just before. So what is the requirement of the new forging method? First, forger first, uh, should transmit uh, malicious files to the car directory. Uh, second, forger should monitor the car to detect failures caused by forging. Third, 
or they should be able to test the kernel area. area. Uh, so, so therefore, in this talk, I would like to introduce uh, Automated US Forging Method that satisfies these three requirements. Actually, I'll, I'll explain later. Second requirement is difficult to completely satisfy. Uh, some case, in some cases, we cannot satisfy the second limitation, uh, second requirement yet. Because it's, it's a black box posing, we cannot monitor the inside of the car. But we try to suggest the best ways to detect failures in black box uh, fuzzing. Uh, so main contribution of the talk is that we did not develop uh, new, new fancy fuzzing techniques. There are already great USB research, and we, we show how to apply them to, to the fuzzing, for fuzzing cars. <coughs> and actually, and finally, we found uh, some vulnerabilities in several cars. I'm going to show how to do that. So how do we solve the, the challenges? So first, let's connect the fuzzer to the car directly by a USB cable. If fuzzing is possible in this way, the fuzzing process becomes very simple. There are only two steps, connect, connect fuzzer and car, and just start fuzzing. If it's possible, fuzzer can automatically transmit malformed, malformed files to the car and further can monitor the car to detect failures. It means that testers don't have to move the files and don't have to monitor the car during fuzzing. So let's talk about the advantage first. First, it reduces the workload of, workload of testers by removing the test steps. Because, the previous, because, in, the, because the, in the previous method, it requires five steps, and moreover, the steps should be repeated several times to test enough number of files. But if a puzzle can transmit, fi transmit the file to the car by itself, the uh, puzzle process becomes very simple. Second, oh sorry. Second, in this test, puzzle can detect your failures, so tester does need to monitor all the time. And third, Forger can automatically generate my phone files and send them to, to the car. I don't know why it's moved to the next page. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, Forger automatically generates my phone files and send them to vehicle. So, Forger can continue without human interaction. And now we can do corner fuzzing. So how, how can we do these things? Because of the, these two things, we can, we can do that. Uh, first is a Linux USB gadget. <coughs> we need to make, a, make the car recognize our device as a USB storage. To do that, we need to use a Linux USB gadget. Linux USB gadget makes a Linux system appears to be a USB device to a host. So it's a kind of way to emulate a storage device. As I know, it's only available in Linux, so we need to prepare Linux device. So uh, in, in our test, we use a Raspberry Pi. So it means that we emulate a USB storage using the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so car recognize the uh, a specific folder in the Raspberry Pi as a as USB storage. So if we put some files in the folder, the video player will get the files and play them. Second thing is the USB raw gadget. We also use USB raw gadget for kernel fuzzing. It's a it's a Linux kernel module that implements a low level interface uh, for the Linux USB gadget, sub gadget subsystem. Uh, using the raw gadget, USB raw gadget, we can transmit arbitrary USB request to the USB host. <coughs> Syscaller already supports the USB forging using the this raw gadget. So 
so we just use we we can just use the CG caller to forge USB kernel stacks in the cars. So we use these things, these two things, to conduct USB forging to the real cars. So let's summarize two USB gadget mode and low gadget. We need a Linux. We need a Linux device. In this research, we use the Raspberry Pi 4, and then connect the Raspberry Pi to the car by a USB cable. To transmit data, you should use the USB cable that supports the supports data transmission. Some USB cable, you know, only support charging. The kinds of USB cable cannot be used in this forging. And we we set up Raspberry Pi for USB forging. <coughs> To do media player forging, we emulate Raspberry Pi as a USB storage using USB gadget. And to do kernel forging, we use low, low gadget. First, first, I'm going to tell you about how to do media player forging. This figure shows the overview. All these processes are automatically done by forger without human interaction, uh, except the start command. First, we need to set up Raspberry Pi as a USB gadget. And second, the folder generates malformed media files into the folder. And third, the folder mounts the folder as a USB storage. Then fourth, if the folder, folder is mounted, the media player automatically recognizes it. Then media player gets the all files in the folder and play them. During the files are playing, uh, Forger monitor Raspberry Pi's kernel log, which is the message log, uh, for detecting failures uh, caused by fudging. After all files are played, Forger amount the folder and removes the all files in the folder and go back to the step two and repeat the step. This is how to the USB fudging by directly connect the Forger and the car. <coughs> We can do this without the USB stick and without the human interaction. And uh, uh, so whole process can be done without a human interaction. So this is the initial step set up in initial, se initial setup for USB gadget mode. We do this at first step in the previous slide. Uh, because time limit, I can explain details in each line. But if you want more, you can find the details on the internet. There are already many good articles, papers that explain how to do how to make a Raspberry Pi USB storage. And let's talk about how to generate malformed media files. <coughs> uh, to generate the media files, we collect normal media files to use them as seed files. Then we manipulate the sheet files using bit flipping techniques. Uh, we just randomly choose 1% of bits of the sheet files and flip the selected bits. That's all. It's very simple. Uh, actually, you know, there are already several file fudgers. But in our, in our test, in our exp experience, they are not very useful to the media player in the media player forging in the car. <coughs> we cannot figure out why. We cannot figure out the exact reason. But we, we just guess that the most existing file forgers, existing file forger mutates the uh, file signature part. It means that uh, if, a file, uh, if a file signature is mutated, the media player do not play the file. So, uh, most media players do not play the files which have uh, incorrect file signature. So, so when we generate the uh, malformed files, we do not mutate the file signature part. <coughs> that, is, that is our first tip in the car forging, forging automotive video players. Uh, next tip is the, if, if the file content is mutated too much, some media player don't play the video file also, even if the video file has correct file signature. 
So this is why we just mutate only 1% of the pile. I cannot say the 1% is the um, magic value for all cars, all cases, but each car has, maybe each car has different, uh, each car has different media players, so you should find your values. And there's one more. Uh, each automotive, each automotive media players support different media file types. So, before you generate the uh, generate malformed media files, you should check the supported file types and generate generate only those files. Uh, because the media players will only play the files that they support, so you don't need to generate files that are not supported by the media. Uh, media player. Uh, usually, media player supports many file types. It's just uh, some uh, some example of them. Now let's talk about how to detect failures. Uh, to detect failures caused by fudging, as you can see, our fudger monitor kernel log, which is the message. But I think. Uh, uh, you probably noticed that um, it is not perfect to detect failures because Raspberry Pi the message row cannot show the exact state of the target uh, media player or exact state of the car. It's just the Raspberry Pi's corner row. But you know, this is black box posing. The only thing we can use is Raspberry Pi the message row. That is uh, currently that's, uh, our best option. So we have to identify to target states by only using this row. So let me explain more detail about how our fuzzer detect failures by the T message row. There are two cases. First, we found out that some issues are rebooted uh, if the video player is crashed. In that case, a uh, USB connection between Raspberry Pi and issue is also uh, of course, disconnected because its uh, issue is rebooted. After issue is rebooted, Raspberry Pi and issue are connected by USB again. At that time, USB connection log is created at the message, so Fuzzer can detect failure. Fuzzer can know oh, there is something wrong uh, using the message log. And there is a second case: some issue is just shut down and not, not rebooted again. Uh, in this case, there is no USB reconnection log because in the message because it is, is not limited. So Forger cannot know the failures. Uh, so the Forger just try to mount the next next folder that contain new files, but the mount trial mount is, will be failed because the issue is shut down. So at that time, Forger can detect the failures. Uh, of course, it's not real-time detection, but it's the best option we can do it now. Uh, let's look at let's look at these figures. <coughs> Left figure shows the uh, fuzzer slow, and right figure shows the T message row. At this time, we conducted fuzzing using a hundred files at each trial. As I mentioned before. Uh, our folder repeats mount and unmount folder several times. So there will be USB reconnection log as many as the number of mounts. In this figure, we mount, in this row, we mount a test folder three times, but there are four USB connection log in TMSA. And the last log is a little bit different from other logs. So Fuzzer can notice that there is something wrong in the media player or issue. So in this way, we uh, in this way the Fuzzer can detect failures. Uh, actually, there is of course there is a limitation of our method. Uh, we are doing black box fuzzing. Fuzzer in Raspberry Pi cannot know exactly which part is currently playing in the media player. Fuzzer generates hundreds or thousands of files in the folder and mount the folder. Then media player get the old files and play them. So when a crash is detected, 
Father cannot know which file caused the crash. Father should find the file causing, by the, cra causing the crash <coughs> by replaying the files again one by one. To solve this limitation, we tried two things. First, we can just put only one pile in the folder and mount the folder and play just only one pile. If we do folding like this, when crash is occurred, we can exactly know the which file is causing the crash because there is only one file. But in this case, mount and amount is required for the number of files. Uh, mount and amount is a uh, very slow operation. So we have to, t but we have to test the large number of files. So we need to reduce the number of mount and amount. So in our experience, playing only one file at once is not a good idea. So we need to find the appropriate number of files each one cycle. This is why we generated and played only 100 files at each trial in the previous slide. We can play more, more files, but we don't. Because, it's, uh, because if there are too many files played at once, it's difficult to find the file cause, cause the crash. Uh, I cannot say 100 number is the ideal number for all fuzzing. It's very different for each cases, so you should find the basic number of files you, for your own test. And actually, there is one more limitation. In some cases, some issue is not rebooted and shut down, even if the video player is crashed. In this case, USB is not disconnected, even if the, even if the video player is crashed and stopped. So further, cannot detect failures. Test have to monitor car again. It's one of our limitation and it's one of our future work to solve this this one. We found these cases in GM Volvo cars. What they uh, in common is that they use Android Automotive OS. So we just guessed Android Automotive OS uh, is not good cases for our project. So until now, I talk about how to forge an automotive media player by USB. But to test, to test the attacks over USB port, media player forging is not enough. Let's test automotive kernel by USB. You know, there is already great research project about forging USB kernel stack. In this project, this also implements raw gadget for USB kernel forging. And he also implements USB fuzzer using the raw gadget and this fuzzer integrated in, in, into a scissor color. You know, scissor color is the best fuzzer for kernel fuzzing, so we just use a scissor color to fuzz USB kernel stack in the car. But let's think about it. Scissor color is the coverage guided fuzzer and it, it requires kernel build for fuzzing. But we, we are doing black box fuzzing now. We don't have source code car, source code of the car. So it's difficult to use the CC color as it is. So how can you generate the fuzzing inputs for USB kernel stack in the car? <coughs> but we can do fuzzing using CC color. Uh, actually, CC color for USB already found about 300 or more bugs in the Linux kernel USB stack. That bugs are reported to the CGCorolla appspot.com. In that report, there are codes uh, to reproduce the bug. So we can use the reproduction codes for our fuzzing input. Uh, we just collect the reproduction code and just ex execute the code by using CGCorolla programs. Uh, CGCorolla provides a way to reproduce the bug with a specific input. So you can reproduce the bug founded by CISCORO using, using these, those two programs. I think many of you guys are in here already know where, how to use CISCORO. Anyway, this is the example, this is the example code, uh, is example command to reproduce the bug. 
bounded by CG color. Uh, in this case, the name of the reprodu reproduction code is crash 01.row. Uh, and the, the figure in the bottom shows the uh, one of the reproduction codes in the cgcollapse.com. This figure shows the shows that the bug bug list reported in the cgcollapse.com. Actually, there's there is a lot of bugs on this side, except the USB bugs. So you should filter only the USB bugs. The link in the bottom will show the only USB bug. And there is one more thing. Actually, all reported bugs don't contain the reproduction code. So you can only find the reproduction code uh, in the articles if she or she is written in repro field. So you don't need to collect all the, the bugs. So this is the overview of the forging USB kernel stack in the car. It's very simple. Further, just collect the reproduction code from the cgcollapse.com and, uh, and then just reply the code. Of course, we can also mutate the reproduction code, uh, mutate the data part of the reproduction code. But actually, <laughs> we can find the vulnerability using the just the original code. So in, in kernel forging, we also monitor the message log to detect failures by, uh, caused by fuzzing. All cars we tested were rebooted if kernel crashed, uh, so fuzzer can detect all failures by using this method. So now let's talk about testing with real cars. Uh, actually, this is the most challenging part in the car hacking because we don't have enough test cars. So even if we have, we have a very good idea, it's very difficult to prove using the real cars. Uh, luckily, uh, our forging test is, our forging test, can, our forging test can be performed without disassembling the car, and it does not cause the serious damage to the car. So we can test using the rent car. So we rented cars for a day or just a few hours and tested them. Uh, there were not many different types of cars that we could rent, but we rented as many as possible and tested them. Uh, these are the summary of the vulnerabilities we found. We found vulnerabilities from Renault and Chevrolet and Fox, Volkswagen. And we also found a vulnerability in AGL. Actually, AGL is tested on the uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, and uh, the actually, number seven vulnerability is not reported because we found number six and seven vulnerability in the same version uh, when we just only reported number six first. And Volkswagen patched the vulnerability very quickly before we reported number seven. So, and number seven vulnerability is not working on the patched version, so we cannot report that. Uh, we should report number six and seven at the same time. It, it's our miss because we quite busy at that time. We just forgot the report of number seven. Anyway, I'm gonna show our demo video. So media player loads the uh, play again. Uh, there is a Raspberry Pi here. Pitch just to control the Raspberry Pi. And it's a reboot, uh, it just shut down. It, this is the video player forging case. And this issue is shut down and not rebooted again. So tester try to turn off the car and turn on the car again. Interestingly, car is back, back up, uh, back uh, working on normally, but the head union EC is not working on, still not working on. So we have to hard reset the uh, head union issue. Mm. 
Yes, this is the first demo. So we, we can crash the uh, head unit shield by the media, play, media player crash. In this test, we tested uh, while driving. You can see the head unit issue is reverted. This is the reverted case, and it's also video player posing. There is a Raspberry Pi over there. So you can see that uh, issue is reverted by crash even if the car is moving. And third video show the corner forging demo. It's also moving. There is a Raspberry Pi, and the uh, issue is rebooted. Even if the car is moving. The last demo is also corner forging. Okay, uh, these are our demo video. So let's conclude my talk. <coughs> Uh, the current USB forging used in the automotive industry has many limitations. It's too complicated. It requires huge workloads to testers. Uh, the, the, this lim these limitations can be addressed by direct directly connecting forger and car via USB cable. The, and USB gadget and low gadget makes it possible. So. Uh, we can signif significantly reduce the workload of the testers, and and also we can test the USB kernel stack, and also we can find the uh, uh, real world vulnerabilities. Okay, it's end of, it, end of my talk. Thank you.